I think this defense has an opportunity to be as good as last year. And I know that's saying a lot because this is one of the best units Phil Parker has had. Um, you look at guys like Jack Campbell, Seth Benson, uh, Kay- Kayvon Merriweather was a, a veteran in the, in the back end, and they lose all those guys. Plus, they lose a veteran, Riley Moss. They lose a first-round draft pick and Lucas Van Ness. Am I, am I delirious to think that this team, this defense, could be as good as it was last year? I think there's certainly a chance of that. I think one key to whether or not we can get that done is simply this. Nick Jackson needs to be as productive for Iowa as he was last fall for Virginia. If Nick Jackson can do that, that simply means he's clearly made his way into the starting lineup. If he can perform like a starter and be a, be a productive player as he was last fall for Virginia, then I do think that we'll be in solid enough shape with Higgins as a likely other linebacker. Um, you know, we need to get outstanding productivity out of those two inside backers. We've had it in the past. It's been something we've had pretty routinely through the years. Uh, Seth has done a good job in terms of coaching, and we need him to do that again. I'm sure he will. And uh, those linebackers this fall need to be hopefully almost as productive as the ones we had last fall. And special teams, Don, I, I, I mean, what can you say about LeVar Woods other than he seems to uh, figure it out each and every year? And, again, I, I think this is one of the strongest – kicking units that he's had and he's had some really good ones you think about place kickers caleb shudak keith duncan miguel racinos uh, you go down the list and now you've got one in drew stevens that you know, he's going into his true sophomore year but boy he was sensational last year tory taylor's back for an extra season as well they don't have any changes at long snapper or holder um talk about special teams how important it is at this uh, university let me talk about it, too, in terms of every starting field position. One of the parameters that made the biggest jump from two years ago compared to last year was every starting field position. And to go one step further, it's really interesting to, to hear this and, just, and to realize it was true. As I started charting all it out, Corey, I couldn't – the winning percentage you saw every starting field position in the first season was not nearly the same as it was when it got cooler in November. Every starting field position became even more important as the season went on. Or to be specific, the first 30 games of the year, conference games I'm saying, our winning percentage was 73% if you won on every starting field position. Any kind of edge. Might have been a yard or two. Might have been five or ten. But any kind of edge on every starting field position, you won the game 73% of the time. The last 34 games of the regular season, that percentage jumped all the way up to 91%. So in November, it was almost a guarantee to win the game if you had an edge on every starting field position. I just thought it was interesting how much it changed from October to November. And, of course, some some conference games in there in September also. 